You're listening to the Tip In Maple Leafs Podcast with your host, Chad and Dan. Hey everybody, welcome to the Tip In Maple Leafs Podcast, episode number 234. I'm Chad. I'm Dale. So uh, we're going to be going to both sides of the coin tonight. (laughs) One side, amazing. The other side, dog shit. Am I right? You're right. Is that basically sum up Monday and Tuesday night for you? What the hell happened last night in Columbus, man? What the fuck was that? What happened? Like, talk about just shit in the bed, completely shitting the bed. Well, we should first talk about Tampa. This is what I was going to say, Chad. Like, how do you go from what you did Monday night, an absolutely lights out game, one of the best regular season games they've played in fucking years. Maybe the best ever. It reminds me of, do you remember like back, I don't know if it, maybe it was in the COVID bubble. I can't remember where they went into Edmonton and they just like pounded them. Do you remember this game? It's going back a few years anyway. Yeah, I do remember that game. But they never, it was like their best game of the regular season, but they never followed it up. Then they just went back to looking like the same old fucking Leafs, right? But anyway, very impressive. The Tampa game, of course. But how do you felt? How do you follow that up the next night with what you did in Columbus? What the fuck was that? What, like, I don't get it, man. Like, it's so weird. I mean, Monday night was like the way they played, it, it gave me so much hope and so much optimism. I was like, wow, this, like, if they could play like this, like, if this team is capable to do this, they're unstoppable. Like, there's nobody they can't beat. And I, I actually started to picture them like going deep in the playoffs and, they're this, you know, on the puck team and dump and chase, all this crazy stuff. And then they go to Columbus and it's, it's, I can't you know, even explain it. Like, you know, you know what it was? They went to Zanzibar. They ran into some sloppy BJs, sloppy yeah. BJ action all night. Those little blue jackets, when the Leafs come to town, they love it. So sloppy BJs, but no, look, man, honestly, like old habits die hard, right? Like this is the thing. Like, Everything was feeling fucking great. Everything was feeling great. And I thought absolute, I had money on the fucking game, Chad, with like a fucking moron. I thought like, I was like, this is a no doubter. After they played in Tampa Bay, I'm like, this is a no doubter. Yeah. Even on the, even on the second night of a back to back, you looked at Columbus's lineup and you're like, even with the beast in net, and even on the second of a back-to-back and the third and four nights, all you have to do is just hang in there, right? If you just keep this game 1-1, one, 2-2, one, two, two, you'll probably come out on top because you they, got more skill. If they but, brought their B game, they would have still beat them, but they brought... They didn't like, even show up. No, no. Didn't even show up. And no. from the... The Beast was awful. Hildeby was... Oh, yeah, he didn't... I'll more on him in, in, in a bit here, but can't I just don't understand how you go from something so great to something so awful in 24 hours. So I just want to get into like, if there's nothing. <laughs> Did they say anything about it? Did you hear anything like after the game? Yeah. Like I know they, they came out and they never really took any responsibility. No, I, I was going to, I was going to get into Did that. They but... Say anything like, did something come out there? They're, they're their plane broke down and they, they didn't get into Columbus till five in the morning or it was somebody's birthday and they were at the brass rail shoving dollar bills down the girls, you know, no. until three in the morning. What happened? It was a normal night and they like just they, couldn't well, do it. I don't know if, if something happened, they didn't say, say anything, but like that game, the Tampa game was a seven thirty start. So they would have been out of, at Pearson. They would have been on a bird by midnight at the latest, at the absolute <laughs> yeah. latest. And it's like a one hour, 45 minute, well, one hour flight only ohio it's not far like for sure they would have been in they probably would have been in bed two in the morning no problem so it's not like they rolled in at four o'clock in the morning so i don't know as far as i know no nothing happened just routine shit but here's here's some comments after the game and then some stuff that drove me fucking nuts but mitch says like 
we brought our worst game. They brought their best game. We brought our worst. Okay, well, why, Mitch? Like, Mark Mark Masters, too. Like, he leads all these scrums all the time. Throw in a fucking hardball every now and then, Mark. Or a follow-up. Follow like, I like Mark Masters. He does a good job. But he's too soft on these fucking guys. Throw in a fucking hardball from time to time, dude. Do you know what I mean? Some of the questions he asks these guys, it's just like – he just wants to be buddies with them. He doesn't want to rub them the wrong way. Well, I, th I think it's more, you know, you have to be around them every day. You know what I mean? You don't really want to, you want to have, have a, you want to have a good relationship. Don't, you want them to talk to you. Don't go over the top, but ask some questions like that. The fan base want answers to not okay. just like a, you know, you, I guess you just didn't have it tonight. Hey, eh, Mitch. And or like, like, or like you said, on. ask a, ask a follow-up question. When Mitch gives you that answer, like we played our worst game. They played their best. Why? Why did you play your worst game? Like, give me okay. some more detail on that. So, post game interviews, like you said, no accountabilities here. So, None. this was like they got their fucking doors blown off here. This wasn't to Columbus on a Tuesday night. I know it's the second half of back to back. Hildeby didn't help, but they just fucking burn the house down on this one like it just the highs and lows of leafs nation here because it's feeling so good after the tampa win and then this shit it's just like okay i guess nothing really has changed here because like it's here we go again they should have walked in there last night and fucking pounded them but anyway after the game guys talking about being tired being tired like okay you're seven games into the fucking season it's not no it's not fucking January or February, you just yeah. started. You just fucking started. Tired. Come on, dude. Brube was asked about the players talking about being tired. And he said, Well, that's an excuse. Had, like, we're not doing that. But again, Matthews, Tavares, Marner, they were just like, flush it, move on to the next one. I get that mentality. Sure, you're six games, seven games in, flush it, move on to the next one. But how about like, unacceptable. I need to be better than that. Like someone step up. Like there is all three of those guys have a letter on their fucking sweater. But again, it's like the Spider-Man meme. You say it. No, you say it. No, you, <laughs> you. Like don't say anything. Like don't hold yourself accountable. It's just like, what the fuck, man? Will these, will these guys ever fucking learn the right way to do it? <laughs> like, fuck. I, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I, I would honestly, I'd be happy if the excuse had something to do with like learning a new system or, or playing that way. You know what I mean? Like, I, I would be happy if they came out and they gave an excuse, but the excuse instead of we're tired is, you know, like we're, we're trying this new thing. We're, we're buying in. We yep. didn't have it tonight, but we're going to okay. get back at it on Thursday against St. Louis. That makes more sense. Because I like, think, I do think it, the way they played Monday night, the way, I mean, Brube has to watch that and be like, that's perfect. That's, that's exactly that's how it. I want you to play. That, that you get that 90% yeah. of the time, 100%, 90%. You, 100%, 90%, 60%. 100%. Like if they, you get that type of effort on Monday night, we just threw out a lot of percentages there and wow. none of them made sense. But. <laughs> 90%, 100%, right? But. Old listeners will get that, maybe. But uh, anyway, Berube, but you're right. Like, Berube did say, he's it's post game, he wasn't that pissed. He's a little pissed, but he's like, I don't know how you weren't pissed after that game. Like, he didn't he, show it fully, but he no, did. But you know, he was pissed. He said just a couple quotes. He said, They outworked us. And he said, They were harder than us. Yeah. That's what she said. That is what she said. But, uh, Normally, the guy who's harder wins. Well, that's exactly what it was. When Barube, yeah. like, he legit said they were much harder than us. Oh, well, much they, harder? Yeah, much harder. Much harder. I left them much out. They were much. very. So they were very hard. Yeah, well, and I don't think the Leafs were, were hard at all. They were soft. They were soft. soft. Completely, completely. The BJs were erect, and the Leafs were just sleeping. They were just laying there letting the BJs do whatever they fucking wanted to them. And you but, can't do uh, that. No, you can't. But anyway, like Hill to be some questionable goals, obviously, but you can't really put fucking pin it on this guy. He got no help at all. Like not fucking any contribution. Well, no, you can't pin it on him, but he did not look good. Of course. I think he got the ball rolling because 
on the I, the one excuse I will give them on the on the second half of a back to back and three and four nights, it's normally it takes teams a little while to get their legs underneath them. You need a few saves in the first ten minutes. You're going to need a few saves. And he he had none. Okay, if, like by the time by the time the 10, 12 minute mark of the first period, the game was over. If, if st- you're right, you're not wrong. But they were okay. Sure, held to be questionable goals, no question. Pucks fucking going right through them. But if Stolars or Wall was in net, I still think they lose that hockey game. They might lose that game, but they might have hung in it. Maybe long. They might have hung in it long enough to do what the Leafs have done in the past, which is fall asleep and then just. You know, get by on skill. You got to be, you got to be real cautious with Stolars here now. Like, yeah, what's yeah. the, what's the magic number to like, you can't play, like, you can't play this guy every night. Wall's got to pull his fucking head out of his ass and get what? in the fucking net, bud. Like, what are you doing? He's like, ready to go. Like, get in the fucking net. This is insane with this guy. But even, like, I just, you can't trust him. Like, I hate that I've soured so much on Joseph Wall already. Like, I hate the fact, like, I was so optimistic about it. But his health is just too much of a fucking problem for me to, yeah. like, well, it's just. Last night was the lightning bolt that, that we all felt about Joseph Wall. Because if if they win that game, we're not talking about Joseph Wall right now. No, but that right. just shattered everything, and now we're every everybody today is like, where the fuck is Joseph Wall? If like dude, couldn't get a save last night, why wasn't Wall in net? Why the fuck wasn't Joseph Wall in net? And it's true, why wasn't Wall in net? If if something happens to Stolars, our season is fucked, big time fucked. You can't you can't rely on Wall. Hildeby, you're too young. Maybe you don't know what you're gonna get. He could give you a stretch of games, but who knows what you're gonna get. And then you got the Murdoch waiting in the wings. He's just get just waiting for an opportunity. And that's going to come. I guarantee, I still, I oh, said yeah. it months ago, Matt Murray will start a game for this team before Christmas. I'm sticking to that. I fucking guarantee it's going to well, happen. Listen, man, if Wall can't go for what any is with, reason. What, what is with well, this Well, listen, if guy? Wall can't go for any reason for, like if something tweaks again, they might not go back to the beast after last night's game. Might be Murdoch. I they might will. go to Murdoch after a back to back. I think you're right. It's gonna but, happen. It's gonna I happen. Mean, Wall's the guy. You gave Wall the extension. Why isn't he in the net? If from he the, was good to go, why didn't he play last night? Chad, from the time that this guy was a Marley, he's been a he's been in the organization for fucking years now. He's 26. He's not a spring chicken anymore. Like the guy's been in the organization for a while. He had a chance. On, people were looking at him to be the number one and Stolarz to fight for it, but probably be the backup. And Wall knew it too. I mean, he, you're not an idiot. If you're in that position, you would know where things are at. You got the big, the bigger contract and all that shit, more money, more term, all that. And then this guy decides opening night. No, no, I can't. <laughs> like, I can't. I can't I play. Can't play. Growing. Like, and now look, everyone's like. Well, Stolarz is the fucking guy. Clearly, he's as been long amazing. As, as long as he plays like that, he's the number one goalie in my opinion, not Joseph Wall. So Wall now has put himself because he's like in his own head, or I, I don't doubt that there's something going on. Like you got a groin injury, I, you pull your groin, you pull your groin. I get it. Yeah, but maybe you just want to play through something. Like originally, it was tightness, tightness. Well, it's fucking almost been a month. <laughs> Like, what are we doing? It's well, almost the end of October. Like, you're you're off the IR. You're back at practice. Why? I don't know. Look at Columbus's lineup last night, and I know it was a back to back. Why didn't you just throw Wall in? I get it. There's travel and things like that involved, but why didn't you just throw Joseph Wall in the net last night? I don't know. If this is your guy in the future, he should be ready. If he's ready to go, he should play. Man. Now you, you got play. you got St. Louis on Thursday, you got Boston Saturday, you got uh Winnipeg next Monday, and then I think forget who it is after that. But there's three games. What Winnipeg's like hasn't Winnipeg's the best team in the league right now, hasn't lost a fucking game. St. Louis, Barube's old team, and then a division rival, the Bruins, who are struggling right now. Maybe you give them the like I know it's a divisional game, but do you give them the like I think the Bruins game might be the easiest game of those three games. Like, yeah, maybe. Uh, where or where or where do you put them in? 
back at home or on the road in Boston or Winnipeg. to me, it's 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 how you look at it. Like if he's ready to go, and you want this guy to be your guy, then he plays the next game. He plays. No, what? what? Fuck that! What? Do that, you, no, but why? That's what I'm just no saying. Way. If that's the way you're looking what, at it, what but for me is- personally, for me personally, if I'm Barube, I'm like. Stolars is our number one. I was just gonna say, what message does that send to the guy that's been winning you games since the pop since yeah. opening night? I'm just Come saying, on. if management and everybody, they're no. the ones that gave him the contract, like no, extended them already. If they're saying, Hey, this guy's our number one, no, when he's ready, he's done he's nothing gonna go. to prove he's done nothing to prove that he's done. He's got to earn it. I agree. I agree. In my mind, I totally agree. He is the backup and Stolars is the starter. Hundred percent. And he's got to win back that net. Hundred percent. He it was never his to begin with. Like well, he's got to win it. Like he's he going to take it from like, Stole Arts. Everyone, his. everyone thought it was going to be his at the beginning of the season, like including myself. But it's not his fucking net. No. Far fucking from it. The and guy like, can't. The guy can't put his entire time in Toronto. Marley's lease. He can't put a stretch of games together for a couple months. He can't do it without getting injured. So until I see that. It's not his fucking net. It'll never be his fucking net because he can't play. He can't fucking play. That's it. He just yeah. refuses to play. <laughs> like but opening night, morning of, I can't do it. Can't play, guys. What? What are you? What are you serious? Well, like, let's see, let's see because right now it, the spotlight's on him. After what? after that performance in Columbus, I don't think anyone is going to want the beast taking like going back in net anytime soon. So Fair. now it's down to him and Stolars. Fair. But coming off of that Tuesday night loss, Thursday night at home against your old team, you're not risking anything. You're putting Stolars in the fucking net. Because you still you don't, even, you don't even know what you're going to get with Joseph Wall. 100%. Like, I, I, that's what I'm saying. I agree with you. I totally agree with you. That's what I would do. I'm just saying if management is is looking at it as this is the guy because they gave him the contract, like they extended him as if he's going to be our goalie for the next four years. I know. Then they're probably saying, "Hey, when he's ready, he's going in." I think Barube would say, "No problem." And then come game time, Stolarz would be starting. <laughs> he wouldn't even <laughs> say no problem. He'd say, "I don't think so." <laughs> yeah, like you're not telling Barube what the fuck, like who to play and who not to play. Like I no, don't think to me it's Stolarz net right now. Like 100%. he's the guy. He's the guy. Okay, so the overall effort, like it just wasn't there. Obviously, it was just fucking brutal. Really? Um, there's there's nothing I liked about that game. There's literally not one positive I can take away from that game other than except maybe the fact that Matthew Nyes scored again, and he's now scored in back-to-back games, scored against Tampa, scored against uh, Columbus. He's yep. looked real good, real good. But everybody else, hard pass tired or not just um, like they got to come out on on thursday and and just I know. kill it. it it's been a long time since i could watch a leaf game and every single player was playing yeah. awful yeah like th- there's a lot of games where you're like where's matthews tonight or where's marner tonight what the fuck's yeah. happening out there what's wrong with the d the goaltending sucks this was top to bottom it was so it's unex- like it i guess like this is how dumb i am as a leafs fan like for me, it was unexpected. I'm like, what is this? There's no way they've been playing. You didn't so- kind of think they- that it was a bit of a trap game? No, I didn't think. I honestly didn't think so. They had been playing so well. I'm like, this is really looking good. And then all of a sudden that, and it's just like they, it, every, the, the, like it, the balloon yeah. deflated. Like that was yeah. it. It's like, oh, fuck, here we go. These guys again. Had they, beat, guys had, again. had they beat Tampa, but it had been a close game on Monday night. You might have thought different, but because they played so unreal, unbelievable. But yeah. to be fair, man, no team in the league has lost more games to lower seed out of playoff teams than the Toronto Maple Leafs. I thought we were gonna. I thought we were gonna. I thought we were gonna see something different. I really did. Um, One of those games, like I, I thought, I didn't think they were gonna get blown out six two, but no I was way. like, I, I was like, this, they could lose this game. Like I thought it might be the, the like the Montreal game in the opener. Yeah. Or you lose one nothing, or you just can't score something like that because it's, it's a bit of a trap game. But the way they play, holy shit! Yeah, crazy oh. man. Anyway, Max Pacioretty leaves the game with a lower body injury. What a fucking surprise! This well, guy put a guy through the glass. 
there's no, there's no yeah that's true there's no update they didn't today was a day off we're recording this on what is it wednesday night um today was a day off so no update on patch ready but obviously with the injury history there would you would it shock you at all if it was like he goes on ltir wouldn't surprise me i mean the guy never plays he can't stay healthy no so is it yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll we'll know. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise more. me. And I mean, Yarn Croc's coming back. So they've got to do something with the payroll anyway, with the cap. Well, anyway, so we'll see. Just a, some rapid fire stuff here. Holmberg yep. absolutely looks like he should be in the AHL right now, not in the NHL. I don't know. I know Brubes spoke highly of uh, Holmberg, but lately you got to be watching that, thinking this guy. No, <laughs> like, yeah, he, it's a hard no for me right now. He should be out of that lineup. Why they decided to take camp out, like, I guess they're thinking, I, I guess I, I think I know why. Like, Holmberg would be a cheaper option. You could trade camp, potentially, and Holmberg could fill that fourth-line role. For me, like, it's only been a couple games, but Holmberg just looks like he's struggling. Like, for camp is a big body. He makes too much money, sure. But Lorenz, Camp, Reeves. I like that as the fourth line. Maybe you just maybe you just put that together and just like leave it, leave it. Stop trying to fucking like they're tr they're trying to do patchwork with Holmberg. Oh, let's put him here. Let's put him here. It's got to be in the bottom six somewhere. He sucked with Tavares. He sucked on the fourth line. What's the next move? The Marlies. It's got to be right. Yeah. Or press box at least. Like take a seat for a bit. Maybe we'll keep you around, but you're not playing right now. Like, and, and again, and, like, and outside of, uh, outside of the Columbus game, like he's looked bad. Yeah. He hasn't looked season. good. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Like I know Robertson. We're not just back. talking the Columbus game. No, every, no, no, Everybody was bad in the Columbus game. Yeah. No, he hasn't. He's just, he hasn't looked good. Like he's, they're trying to find a spot for him, but everywhere they put him, it does. It, ha it hasn't worked yet. Um, Robertson finally scored his first of the season last night. He drove. I did. I did like the goal actually. Like he, it wasn't like a flute. Like he drove to the net pretty hard. Like it was a good goal. But I think Robertson probably has done enough. Even though the scoring hasn't come, but I think he's done enough to stay in. But JT, man, again, like what? Pacioretty gets hurt. I thought maybe okay, Pacioretty, if he can get a stretch of games, him, JT, seems to be some chemistry. Robertson. I didn't hate the idea of it, but that third line, man. Big time problems. Like, what do you do there? Yeah. What do you do there? If I said, Red I said in the last podcast, he JT needs certain types of players to play with to to sort of pick him up to carry him. Well, who is it going to be? That they don't have those wingers. Like, unless you put him up on the second line where he has like a knee lander who can carry the line, he, he doesn't have it. Well, here's JT's a, he's a different type of player. Like he is, he's a great face-off guy. He he likes to cycle. He's good at getting the puck, but he's a shooter too. He's not yeah. really a great passer. No. Like he's like, not known to be a great passer. He can pass, no. but yeah, he yeah. likes to take the shot. Yeah. And then you've got him out there with Robertson and Pacioretty. Well, what do they do? Shoot. They shoot. Yeah. All shooters. Yarn Croc, like it's, I guess that's the only option. If Pacioretty can't play, I guess it's, it's going to be Yarn Croc. Yeah, but which might I, actually be the best for JT. Yarn Croc might be the best type of player that he needs. Maybe. I don't I'll know. tell you, I'll tell you, here's, you mentioned Nylander. Well, there's another Nylander in town playing just down the road. Who's absolutely killing it with the Toronto Marlies. He is points in like every game. I think he's getting scoring every night. I mean, they signed this guy for a reason. Like if he's doing, he can score at the NHL level. Can't be any worse than Holmberg. No, oh fuck, no, no, not right now. Yeah, you can so, bring him up. You, I mean, I don't know. I haven't been keeping track of the Marlies that close, but I have every now and then watched some stuff on YouTube, and I know Nylander's popping it in every fucking night. So, like, there's an there's an option, but the third line is concerning for me. I don't I don't love it. I don't know really what you do with it. I don't really know. Like, yeah, you're just, like everyone's a shooter. Like maybe Tavares just he needs to. I don't know. I don't know what he needs. He need, like you said last podcast, he needs to be taken off the fucking power play. That's for sure. Oh, for three again on the power play last night. Like, come on, guys. Yeah. Like his his timing and everything is is so off. Dude, like, 
I think it was the game was nothing, nothing at the time where he had the pass in front that he completely whiffed on. And then it like went through his skates and like last eat last year, JT scores that goal. I don't know. Something's just off. He can't, he's just behind on everything. Well, he's aging. He's not, that's like, he's just, gonna, I know, but to decline that much. Well, it's it can, crazy. It may it be, can happen. It can happen quick, man. I guess <laughs> it can, Like I guess, but you said about the sickness and I, and I have heard a lot about that since you said it is like, he, he was really sick. Yeah. Fair. So it yeah. may just be taking a little while to get back because it's right at the start of the season. He didn't Fair. play a whole lot in training camp. Maybe it's just taking him a little while. So I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. He's That's just, uh, what do you do with them in the meantime? You got to take him off PP1 and you got to find some wingers to play with them on, on the third line because he's not moving up to the second line. Hell no. Hell no. Third and he ain't going down to the fourth. Well, it's possible. You imagine have eleven million dollars centerman. Yeah, but you gotta take take the money out of it because, like, this is the last year that he's making. You like, can't he's... take the money out of it in a hard salary cap. No, well, league. no, but it it is what it is. But like, yeah, no, he probably won't end up on the fourth line. You're right. But would you put it past Barube? He he doesn't owe to bears fucking anything. Like, if I think this could very easily be John's last year with the Toronto Maple Leafs. So, like, you know what I mean? What's Fuck, dude. If he's not bringing what the team needs, what yeah, are you gonna... I, I I wouldn't put him on the fourth line, but I would start by taking him off the top power play. Hundred percent, got to do it. Okay, this is the last thing I got. Okay, uh, this will go for a little bit though, because I I'm gonna throw a, a hard ball to you to end this podcast episode, Chad. What are we? What are we? Did we say what it is? What's this episode? Two thirty four. Did you say 234, that? Two thirty four. Yep, I did. Anyway. Yeah. Episode 234 here. What do you think you could get for Morgan Riley? Mm, not Seven, much. $7.5 uh, million. Dollars. I don't know if he's got a, a no move or not, but yeah, he does. Would you entertain that option? Uh, yeah, I would because I think whether, whether it's now or in the off season, depending yeah. on what happens here. Of course, I think he like seven and a half for how many years has he got left on it, or did it just start this year? I think started he started last got, year. I think he's got like at least five. He's not, no, he signed that fucking eight year deal. He's probably got yeah, like seven or six years left. I mean, you got if you, yeah, if you look at it, seven and a half million dollars. Uh, he's not playing the most minutes as a defenseman. He's not on PP one, doesn't really kill penalties. No, he's he not doesn't really. Yeah, well, no. he, he'll go out for the end not of really. a penalty kill yeah, sometimes, it's, it's rare. but very rare. He doesn't really. He's not really physical. Like he's not. He's not a big bruiser in front of the net or anything that the forwards fear. So what is he? Like what are you paying seven and a half million dollars for? You, you know, and what? How many points does he have? Is he on pace for 25, 30 points? I like, don't know, but I don't know like, what you're I don't know what you're getting. I, I would have million dollars. So yeah, I would explore moving him. I would explore it. And here's a maybe a pipe dream because this team's off to a good start and whatever, but it doesn't have to happen now. But our GM, his former squad, the Calgary Flames, he signed a dude who used to play for the Leafs who makes exactly the same amount of money. Seven point five million dollars. And I'm talking about ninety one. In the red and white, Nazem Kadri. You imagine Kadri comes back and or they send Riley. You probably have to send something else to Riley and something for Kadri. And then all of a sudden you got Matthews, Kadri, Domi, JT. I don't know, whatever, however you want to do it. Like, yeah, fuck, dude. You might like Naz is just like. I'm just floating it but out like, there. Probably a pipe dream, but like, could you imagine Naz coming home? To yeah, that would, okay. Yeah, center? you you'd have a uh, you'd have a guy, a legitimate second line center. Yeah, I've, he's a but, Naz is Naz has turned since ever since he left the lease, he has turned into a fucking beast. Man. But you're he's missing a, you're missing a defenseman now. Yeah, I know. Well, no, here's here's, so here's what you do. You Ekman Larson is good enough to play on the top unit, so if he takes Riley's spot, you put Benoit and McKay back together, and then maybe you put Lilligren and 
uh, get him in the lineup uh, until the trade deadline or something with Hack and Paul or whoever, and then you try to upgrade those bottom spots at the trade deadline. I'm just flowing yeah. it out there. I know this is all whatever. Or, or it's, it's, and we like we should we should remember that, like. The last few years in the playoffs, we've come on this podcast just praising Morgan Riley. He's he's been really good. The heart and soul and determination that he's he's been really good playoffs. But they so I don't think we should throw him under the bus right away. Well, but they still haven't won anything. I know they haven't won anything, but to trade him from Nazem Kadri just seems a little. But you would you not? But but would you not do that in two seconds? Because I would. I I wouldn't have to think very hard about that trade. Yeah, maybe. Maybe I'd have to look more into it. I don't know. How I, I don't. I don't think he's got left. I don't know his age. I don't know what's going on. I don't think the Flames would do it. I don't think the Flames would do it. Like Hadley's no, I don't think Morgan player. Riley's a big. Like I don't think he's a sought after no. asset right now. No, not at that pay. Not at that pay price. Not at seven and a half million. No, no. But okay, so take that one more thing quickly. Take that out of the equation. Then, so let's say he stays. He keeps playing with Taneb. You've got Ekman, Larson, and McCabe. And then the bottom five, six guys right now, Benoit and Timmons or whoever's going to like, I think Hack and Paul will eventually draw in, but fluid situation back there right now. Here's what I would like to see. I would like to see them bring in another top 4D then. Like you keep Riley, you keep Tanev, Ekman Larson plays with somebody else. McCabe slides down. Your bottom pair becomes McCabe and Benoit as your five, six. And you bring in, you try to acquire a number four to play with Ekman Larson. Who that is, I don't know. Pick a guy. There's guys out there that they could obviously get. What do you think about that idea? Yeah, it's an idea. Well, like reunite. It's an idea. I just, I just like we're six games into the season. I don't really want to. I hate doing the whole fucking. Let's trade for this and let's do that. Yeah, because let's be perfectly honest, man. They've been looking for defensemen my whole life. Yeah. They're yeah, not yeah. easy to come by. No, I know. Like their defense and, is a lot like, better. Get don't it. don't get me wrong. But yeah, I would a, just it's I would a lot like better. Adding one more piece, I think. Like if your five six was Benoit and McCabe, and they just added one more piece to play in the but three, how many teams in the league person? are like if we could just yeah. add one more piece? I know, I know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's what that's what I would like to I just, see. But anyway. I'm not a huge fan of the fantasy trades when in October. Well, I'm not suggesting like a player i'm just saying that's what that's what that's a move i, I would like to see them make like yeah that's that's pretty obvious it's yeah. just like saying i would love to see them at a second line center yeah because domi well, doesn't yeah. really fit and then domi could go to the wing and you can just move everybody around it's i think the, I, I, i'm cool i'm kind of cool with the domi thing to be honest with you like no. i wasn't i wasn't originally but no. like i think well the line's been really good the man. line's been great the line's been great but you can't have ty do or ty Domi. you can't have max domi as your second line center you just can't have him man he's not nazim, a, Ka- nazim kadri nazim pick up would the be fo- great pick up the phone tree pick up the phone get it cooking yeah. I, I would I love don't know. Nazim. anyway I, I don't know yeah. Uh, so listen, everybody, we'll probably be back after the St. Louis game oh, yeah. or yeah, yeah, for sure. Or the Boston game. We'll see. Yeah. Hopefully Joseph Wall's in net and we can talk about it. <laughs> Jesus. He won't be in that on Thursday <laughs> I know, night. I know. Thursday night. I guarantee I that. Saturday, maybe not I'm Thursday. Just, just getting your gears grinded. Oh, oh, that guy. Just can't go, guys. Sorry. Can't play. Right. It's I got burn just... dust. Eat my rubber. Oh. But what, anyway, what, so, oh, sorry. What what did Barube originally say? He not a what did he call it? Not a tweak, but uh, what did he originally say he about Wall? Some lower body tightness? Tightness, tightness. Yeah. It's been almost a month. Loosen it up. Tightness, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Loosen it up, bud. Get yeah. in there. Anyway, for, for anyone over forty over there, you wake up every day with tightness, and you just oh. you just get through it. You just tightness. Can you imagine up. that? Like, no, guys too tight i just it's too too tight tight. can't play too tight sorry i know it's the home opener but i can't do it god anyway for the tip maple leafs podcast don't forget to follow us on uh social media at the tip maple leafs podcast on facebook instagram and youtube hit the bell and uh leave a comment like the video uh you can follow us on tiktok tip and podcast twitter or x tip and pod email us tip and podcast at gmail.com and until next time i'm chad i'm dale we will hey thursday night The coach's old team, the St. Louis Blues, roll into town. Hopefully, they get a much better effort than they did against the BJs. 
on Tuesday night. I don't see how it could possibly be any <laughs> worse. Get any worse. Can only go up from here. So let's go get this thing back on track and get a win for the new head coach on Thursday night against the St. Louis Blues. Let's Thanks for it. watching, guys. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you later. You're listening to the Tip In Maple Leafs podcast with your host, Chad and Dave.